Before we start sculpting a stylized character, we should first set up Blender. And the first thing that I do is set the focal length of the viewport camera. And it's important to set this properly because it affects how we see our objects while we're working. But before deciding what to set the focal length to, we should first understand three concepts. Focal length, field of view and perspective. Since focal length and field of view are directly connected to each other, let's look at those first. Focal length is the distance between the optical center of the camera lens and the camera sensor. And if you didn't understand that, don't worry, you don't really need to. Instead, let's simplify that so that it makes sense for us. Instead of looking through a camera lens, let's look through a kitchen roll tube. Because the tube is so long, your peripheral vision is cut off and you're limited to seeing only what's visible through the circle at the end of the tube. This little circle represents our narrow field of view. If we make the tube shorter, the circle at the end of the tube appears bigger and more of the scene is visible. This is because the end of the tube is closer to our eye and the result is we have a wider field of view. This is similar to changing the focal length on a camera. As you make it shorter, either by turning the zoom ring or switching the lens, the camera gets a wider field of view. Just to clarify this point further, imagine there's two dots on either side of the end of the tube. If we draw a line from our eye to the first dot, and then a line from our eye to the second dot, the angle between these two lines is our angle of view. The closer these dots get to the eye, the wider the angle is and so more of the scene is visible. And this is why a lens with a short focal distance is called a wide angle lens. Now you might have noticed that in some 3D apps like Blender, you change the focal length and in other apps like ZBrush, you change the angle of view. Now you know why these are actually the same thing. So to recap, a long lens equals a narrow field of view, a short lens equals a wide field of view. So what about perspective? Perspective refers to how objects appear relative to each other in distance and size. If you learned perspective drawing at school, you likely already know about two-point perspective. This is where you place two vanishing points on a horizon and then use them to help guide the perspective of the drawing. To create the sense of a wide field of view, the vanishing points are pushed close together, which exaggerates the sense of depth. For a narrow field of view, the vanishing points are pushed further apart, making the scene appear flatter. This distortion also happens inside Blender, and we control it using our focal length. So the golden question is, what should we set it to? Well, many people believe that a 50mm focal length creates an image that looks closest to what our eyes see naturally. And so many people just use that. And it's probably the reason that Blender's viewport camera loads at 50 millimeters by default. However, I do not recommend it for sculpting characters. And to explain why, I should clarify something. While we do use the focal length to control the perspective, you might be surprised to learn that the focal length doesn't actually affect perspective at all. I mean, changing the focal length does affect how much of the scene is captured, which can influence our perception of the perspective, but the perspective distortion doesn't change. Put another way, if this were a drawing, the vanishing points would stay in the same place. The only thing that changes the perspective is changing the distance from the camera to the subject. Which means that if we change our focal length, but we want our subject to occupy the same amount of screen space, we need to physically move the camera forwards or backwards. And it's this that affects the perspective. So going back to the question, what focal length should we use and why don't I recommend using 50 millimeters? Well, the 50 millimeter focal length does look natural at a moderate viewing distance of around three to six meters. So if you attach a 50 millimeter lens to your camera, you're probably gonna be stood somewhere between three and six meters away from your subject, which is where this lens performs best. However, when we sculpt characters, we spend most of our time much closer than this. 
we're constantly getting right up close and personal with it and the result is that the depth of the character gets exaggerated and it looks unnatural and so to compensate for this I recommend turning the focal length up somewhere between 65mm and 85mm because this reduces the perspective distortion and looks more natural when sculpting up close. I have previously recommended 85mm but after a couple of years of experimenting I've settled on 75 as being the sweet spot for me. But this is subjective so feel free to play around and decide what looks natural to you. Now, you might be wondering, what about orthographic view? What is it? What is it for? The orthographic view is where there's no perspective distortion. Or put another way, there's no vanishing points. All the lines just run parallel to one another, so it doesn't look natural, but it does have its place. The benefit of using orthographic view is that you get technical precision. So for example, if you're doing architectural modeling and you need precise control over measurements, removing all perspective distortion allows you to accurately gauge dimensions and proportions. It also means you can check your symmetry and make sure things align. And this is why it's a popular choice for hard surface models, but it's still useful for stylized characters. Particularly during the early stages of a sculpt, I'll jump into a front and side view to check the proportions. Looking at the model head on without perspective distortion makes it really easy to measure how many heads tall the model is. And jumping to a side view allows me to check the silhouette and gives me a good idea how the rhythms are flowing from top to bottom without the interference of perspective distortion. So while I do recommend setting your focal length to around 75 millimeters, be aware that it's useful to regularly check the orthographic views too. Now before you go, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more, I do have a bunch of lessons for sale on my Gumroad store aimed at creating stylized characters in Blender. And we go quite deep into stylized anatomy, looking at the bones, muscles and fat pads of the human body. So if you want to check those out, you'll find a link to that below. But I'm also working on my website, danny-mike.com, where all the lessons from Gumroad are now available to anyone that subscribes through Patreon. Now, some of the lessons are available for free, so you can go and check them out right now using the link below and decide for yourself whether you think it's worth joining for the rest. Now, starting next week, I will be live streaming character workshops to my Twitch and YouTube channels where you can sculpt along with me and as a member you can submit work for feedback and take part in the discord community as well and all the previous live streams will be made available on the website for members too and i will also be updating the website with new written and video lessons as time progresses i hope you learned something new and i look forward to seeing you in the next one